Namo Buddhaya, this is Sabina Gulecha and I welcome you. Uh, in this video, I am discussing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 35. Uh, the title of the discourse is The Shorter Discourse with Sakkaka. Right? Now, this discourse is basically a debate between Sakkaka and Buddha uh, on uh, the Buddha's doctrine of non-self. Right? So, it's an interesting kind of a duel between Sakkaka and Buddha. So, uh, so let's see what happens. Right? So, at one time, Buddha was staying near Vesali. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can check the entire discourse and get your own insights. Okay. So, Buddha was uh, at that time was staying near Vesali in the Great Wood. Now, at that time, Sakaka, the son of Jain parents, was staying in Vesali. Now, Sakaka was a very uh, clever debater and you know deemed holy by many people. So, Sakaka said that I don't see, he was like a you know very arrogant person. He said, I don't see any ascetic or Brahmin who would not shake or rock and tremble, sweating from the armpits if I take him on the debate. Right? So, and even a person who claims to be a perfectly enlightened, perfect, fully awakened Buddha. So he was like, you know, he was like thumping his chest that no one can dare debate with me, argue with me. Uh, you know, sweat will come out of his armpits and he will shock and tremble. Right? <clears throat> that was the kind of arrogance that he had. So then Asaji, Asaji is one of the five uh, uh, mendicants who the Buddha gave the first, first discourse in Sarnath and who got enlightened. So he was, uh, he robed up in the morning and he was going somewhere and he met Asaji. Uh, so Asaji met Sakya, uh, Sakaka. So Sakaka asked, uh, Master Asaj, Asaji, how does the ascetic Gautam guide his disciples and on what topics does instruct, he give the instructions? So, uh, so Asaji said, um, uh, Sakaka, uh, this is how ascetic uh, Gautama guides his disciples, that form, feeling, perceptions, choices and consciousness, basically the five aggregates, are impermanent, they are not self, all conditions are impermanent, all things are not self. So, now the Sakaka says, it's sad to hear Master Asaji and that ascetic Gautama has such a doctrine, right? Hopefully, sometime or the other, I'll get get to meet him and I can dissuade him from this harmful misconception, right? This is what, um, so basically, the Sakaka said. So then, uh, next day, around 500 Lishwis were sitting together. Lishwis, uh, basically, I understand they are some kind of disciples or, you know, of, of Sakaka. They were all sitting together. He said, come on, let's go and meet uh, uh, Gautama, let's let's come and let let me and this is the exact words. I'll take him on in debate and drag him to and fro, and round about like a strong man would grab a long fleece sheep by its fleece and drag it to and fro and round about. Right. So he was like that much confident in 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 his abilities with uh, uh, regarding the debate. So then he went and met Buddha that. Uh, uh, that this is uh, uh. so he again asked the Buddha the same thing what how does Gautam guide his disciples so Buddha replied the same thing as uh, Asaji had told uh, Sakka so now um, As uh, Sakka said I, uh, all the plants and seeds that achieve growth increase in maturity do, do so depending on the earth and the grounded on the earth that means Whatever the plants, the growth that comes from the plant is dependent on the earth. All the hard work that gets done depending on the earth and is grounded in the earth. So basically he was trying to say that there is a self which is the earth, right, from which everything comes. In the same way, an individual's self is form. Grounded on form, they create merit. That means grounded on this form, this body, they create merit and wickedness. An individual's self is feeling, perception, choices, consciousness. Grounded on consciousness, they create merit and wickedness, right? So he was trying to say that the form, feeling, perceptions, consciousness, choices, what Buddha said to be non-self, they are actually the self from which everything arises. So now, uh, uh, Buddha just confirmed uh, with, with Sakaka that you are saying the form is myself, feeling is myself, perception is myself, Choices are myself, consciousness is myself. Is that what you are saying? So, Sakaka said, Yes, indeed, Master Gautama, this is what I am saying. 
and this brick crowd agrees with me so all the lichwis 500 lichwis were there he he kind of sought support from them you know kind of and they also agree with me so, so buddha says very well that what has this big crowd to do with you please just unpack your own statement right that means it's like a you know buddha said don't don't talk about them you talk about only your statement right then uh buddha said okay i'll ask so buddha used to uh, uh, counter question right buddha said that i'll ask you about something and you answer as you like so he said uh, sakka consider an anointed king a king who is a aristocratic prince like a personality of kusala or rajasattu of magadha right would they have the power in their own realm to execute those who have incurred execution that means fine those who have incurred fines or banish those who have incurred banishment that means would they have power on in their own land to take decisions of, of, uh, about things so he said sakaka said yes definitely they will have the power right so he said buddha said what do you think sakaka when you say the form is myself do you have power over your, over your form may do can you tell your form to be that my may my form be like this may it not be like that for example this this body that i have can i if i have power over my body then only i can say to my body you know that my body may it not decay no i don't have any power then how i can say that this body is mine this body is self so so sakka so when buddha asked this question sakka kept silent so buddha said answer now sakka now is not the time for silence if you if someone fails to answer a legitimate question asked by the buddha three times their head explodes into seven pieces there and then and this is actually buddha was not just saying this just as a fact at that time itself the spirit vajrapani vajrapani taking a burning iron threshold blazing and glowing stood in the sky thinking if this sakka doesn't answer when asked the third time i'll blow his head into seven pieces there and then and he was visible to both buddha and sakka now the sakka was terribly frightened and he said okay okay please ask me once more and i will answer so again buddha asked the same thing that when you say form is myself do you have the power over the form to say may my form be like this may i be not like like that so he said no master gautama so then he said mas buddha said think about it sakka you should think before answering right now you said that form is myself now you are saying the form is not myself so so similarly for all these things buddha asked for feelings consciousness choices everything he answered that no then buddha said is form permanent or impermanent he said impermanent because it is changing but if so buddha said if it's impermanent is it suffering or is it happiness any impermanent thing does it give suffering or does it give happiness sakaka said it's suffering now if it is impermanent if it is suffering and if it is perishable is it fit to be regarded as this is mine this is myself so sakaka said no something which is imperishable something which is perishable changeable and which is creating suffering i will not say this is mine this is myself so buddha said so similar buddha buddha asked about feelings perceptions choices and everything so now buddha said consider someone who clings holds attaches to suffering regarding it as this is mine i am this this is myself would that person be able to free themselves of suffering he said sakaka said no so so uh, here then buddha gives the analogy of a hardwood that person wanders in search of hardwood takes a sharp sharp axe and goes to the forest and they see a big banana tree and they they cut it down uh, the cut the banana tree and take away but they would not get the hardwood they would get the banana the wood from the banana tree in the same way when i pressed you grilled you by your own rock when when you pursued me on my own rock train and i grilled you you come out as void hollow and mistaken so you claim to be uh, you know you will say that you i will rock and tremble sweat from the armpits but now the sweat is pouring from your forehead it's soaked through your robe and drips on to the ground while i now have no sweat on my body 
and Buddha revealed his golden body to the assembly. So when Buddha said this, Sakya sat silent, dismayed, shoulders drooping, downcast, depressed with nothing to say. So he was like, he, he uh, considered defeat. And knowing this, Lichvi, uh, 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 one of the Lichvi said to the Buddha that there is a sm- simile that strikes me. So Buddha said, okay, tell. So, uh, so he said that uh, suppose there is a lotus pond not far from the town and there is a crab and the children, they go to that pond, pull out the crab and when, or ex- take out all the claws, snap, creak and break off all the claws. Right? Similarly, Buddha has snapped, creaked and broke off all the sakakas twists, ducks and dodges. Now he can't get near the Buddha again looking for a debate. Now, now, now it seems that the Sakaka was a bit, bit kind of an angry, right? That, so Sakaka said to that Lichvi that hold on Dhumuka, I wasn't, wasn't talking to you, I was talking to Buddha, right? So then Master, uh, so Buddha, uh, Sakaka said that okay, okay, I, I, I guess I, it was just a nonsense on my part to say that, you know, I will defeat you in the debate. And uh, then he said, how do you define a disciple of Master Gautama who follows the instructions and goes gone and following the instructions, he goes beyond the doubt. So Buddha says, it's only when one of my disciples truly sees any kind of form, past, future, present, internal, external, coarse or fine, inferior, superior, far or near, all form with right understanding. This is not mine. This is not, not this. I truly... They truly seek any kind of feeling, perception, everything, perceptions, volitions, consciousness, as not their consciousness. This is not mine. Right? So then, a mendicant, Buddha says, a mendicant whose mind is free like this has three unsurpassable qualities. Unsurpassable seeing, practice and freedom. They honor, respect and esteem and venerate only the realized one, the blessed one, is awakened, tamed, serene, crossed over and extinguished and it teaches Dhamma for awakening, self-control, serenity, crossing over and extinguishment. So then Fakaka said, Master Gautama, it was rude and imprudent of me that I, I thought I could attack you in a debate. For he, And he gave certain analogies. For a person might find safety after attacking a, cat, attacking a rutting elephant but not after attacking Master Gautama. A person might find safety after attacking a blazing mass of fire, but not after attacking, attacking Master Gautama. They might find safety after attacking a poisonous viper, but not after attacking po- uh, Master Gautama. So he, he was like, he, he accepted his mistake that it was wrong on his part, that he thought that he will defeat uh, Master Gautama. And then he basically invited Master Gautama and all the bhikkhus to a, to a food, a lunch, and uh, in his premises. And they had lunch and everything. So this is basically the, the kind of a, uh, this uh, discourse where Buddha uh, engaged, he engaged, Buddha engaged in a de- defeat with, uh, uh, Buddha engaged in a debate with Sakaka and defeated him on the concept of non self so This is the fundamental concept which Buddha uh, actually was, is like unique to uh, Buddha's teaching. And Buddha said, till the time you are in the, you hold the wrong notion that I have a permanent self, you will not come out of the, you know, uh, the samsara. So we have to realize that this body is not me. The feelings, these thoughts, everything, consciousness, uh, my volitional actions, they are all not mine. Till the time I think they are mine, till then only that is the problem. So everything is changing. Body, feelings, everything are changing, right? So they arise because of their nature to arise. And they fall away because it's their nature to fall away. I do not, I just be a witness. This is my practice. I'm just a witness that these uh, form, feeling, thoughts, everything are just arising and falling on their own. And that's the practice of Vipassana that we do, right? Uh, so that we have to do this practice. And the more and more we practice, then we finally get into that un- insight of impermanence, non-self and uh, suffering. And that gives us the wisdom and that frees us. Right? So we have to look everywhere, whenever we move and do our daily work and everything, we have to have keep the right understanding. Don't get attached to anything, don't think anything that is mine. Because the moment you think in anything as it is mine, it, the desire and the grasping on all these things will come, or the aversion will come. Right. So just see that this is just a play happening, and I will not get attached. Everything is 
just like a bubble it will burst right it's only there for a second or a millisecond right so this is the teaching i hope there was uh, it help you in some way uh, do list do read this discourse at your it's a good discourse please do read this discourse at your end also and get your own insight and do share your insights and learnings in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye namo buddhaye